Today, I'm gonna to dive into some basic camera foundations that can help you achieve beautiful and cinematic wedding films. When it comes to creating a feeling within your work, it all starts with understanding how your camera ticks and all the different settings that you can manipulate to capture a beautiful image. And the good news is if you learn these basic skills, you will be able to make any wedding film look and feel cinematic. So first things first, make sure that you are shooting in manual mode. Whatever camera you have, there is a manual setting that you're gonna want to be recording in. This is gonna give you the flexibility to really dial in all of the different settings that I'll be diving deeper into in this video so that you can control every aspect of your camera to shape and adjust your image in order to achieve that beautiful end result. But now that you've set your camera to manual mode, let's dive into the real magic and that is understanding your exposure tools. The first exposure tool is your ISO which is one way to digitally enhance the light within your camera. When navigating through the different values of your ISO, you'll see your image getting brighter and brighter. And while this is one way to increase the light within your image, you also wanna be mindful of which value will give you the cleanest results. When you increase your ISO, you are also introducing noise into your image. And the best way to utilize this setting is by staying within your camera's recommended value. These are also known as your base ISO or dual base ISO. Most cameras today have a dual base ISO, so understanding which one your camera prefers will help you simplify this process and leave you with one less area to worry about as you navigate exposure during the wedding. If you shoot on Sony, I have put up a chart above that can help you find the best values for your camera. But if you shoot on anything else, well, Google me, next is your aperture, which is another exposure setting that does two things, lets more light into your lens and affects the depth of field within your image, which is how you can achieve a blurry background or retain more focus and detail within your background. The difference between these values are important to note for not only creating a cinematic look, but also to create a unique feeling as well. So let's talk about the high aperture. A high aperture such as 5.6 to f16 is gonna let a lot less light in but retain focus and detail within the background. This can be useful during the wedding day when you wanna capture a beautiful landscape and retain that detail and dynamic range of the environment. And it's also even more useful when you wanna retain focus during pivotal moments on the wedding day, such as the groom reaction. Especially if you are a solo shooter and you need to have one camera locked down, closing your aperture can offer some insurance on retaining focus during that part of the day. And then let's talk about low aperture, such as 1.2, 2.8. This really is the sweet spot that will give you beautiful compression and depth within your frame. I personally prefer a low aperture to help achieve beautiful depth and separation between my subjects, and this helps my image feel a lot more cinematic. And then the last exposure tool is your shutter speed, which not only helps control your exposure, but also affects the motion blur within your image. A slow shutter generates more motion blur, while a faster shutter captures more detail within this motion. The general rule for video is to have your shutter speed double your frame rate. So if you're filming in 24 frames per second, the shutter speed will be set to one over 50. If I'm shooting in 60 frames per second, my shutter speed will be 1 1 20. This is gonna give you a clean, smooth image when you are editing your video later. And while these rules are helpful to create a cinematic image, breaking them is also useful when you lack other tools to help you properly expose, such as an ND filter. If you wanna learn more about ND filters, I have a video linked above right here that you can check out. But again, it's great to learn the rules, but it's also really important to break the rules from time to time for the sake of capturing the moment. Now let's talk about frames per second for a second. I know at first, absorbing all this information can be a little bit overwhelming, information overload, but really let's keep it simple when it comes to frame rates, because there are really only two that I feel you need to really immerse yourself with, especially in the world of weddings and that is 24 and 60 frames per second. To keep things simple, 24 is most common in the world of cinema to help capture a sense of realism and familiar feeling. And 60 frames per second will be the most commonly used in wedding videography so that you can achieve beautiful and slow motion footage. 
I primarily film in 60 frames per second throughout the day because my style infuses more documentary elements with artful expression. So having the flexibility to decide the best course of action for my film makes a ton of sense for me to film in 60. But it's all up to the type of feeling that you wanna create within your own work. And the best way to know is really to just experiment. But now that we talked about exposure, let's talk about something equally important to help you create cinematic wedding films. And that is gonna be your color tools. So let's dive into the first color tool and that's gonna be your picture profiles. Your picture profiles are a set range of values that determine your color within your captured frame. How much contrast, saturation, and vibrance your camera bakes into the captured image. When I first got started, I just kept this part really simple by filming in the camera's standard picture profile. Depending on the camera you are using, you probably have access to a wide variety of profiles and finding the best look can be a bit intimidating. So it's best to just keep it simple when you're just starting. Finding a picture profile that has subtle contrast and beautiful tones right in camera really is the best place to start. So before you film your next wedding, go record in all of these profiles. Bring them into your editor and determine which one feels like the best and resonates with the style that you're looking to emulate. Color is another driving force when it comes to feeling, so you wanna make sure that you get this right, right off the gate. And the last color tool that we'll talk about is white balance. Now white balance is the process of removing color casts from your image and obtaining a natural balance to white light. Most digital cameras come equipped with white balance presets to get you started, but I generally recommend using the Kelvin feature and adjusting this setting manually throughout the day. A helpful trick is to set your camera to auto white balance and check the reading that your camera provides for you. And then jump back to Kelvin and set your white balance this way. This is a super efficient way to use the auto white balance feature, but I wouldn't rely on it as your main setting because auto white balance will constantly be shifting in color for every movement or location, making it very difficult to adjust your settings later on. And when it comes to white balance, a good rule of thumb is when you are outside and it's daylight, you wanna be at the 5600 Kelvin range. And then if you're indoors with overhead lighting, 3200 is a great place to start. Now, of course, this depends on the source of light indoors you may need to use auto white balance to find the correct value, but anything with a natural light source, 5600 Kelvin is gonna look the best. Anything with artificial or unflattering orange lighting, 3200 is gonna help you combat this. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you found this video helpful and valuable in some way. If you did, it would mean so much if you consider liking and subscribing. Drop a comment below if you have any other helpful tips on some camera basics that helped you in your filmmaking journey at the very beginning. I'd love to hear from you guys, so drop a comment below, and until next time, keep creating and telling beautiful stories. Peace.